Hello, termites. Welcome back. I have my little fat tire sweatshirt on. I got this in um, Colorado when I toured the Fat Tire Brewing Company, Fat Tire being one of my favorite beers, only on draft. Sorry, don't love it out of a bottle. But on draft, it's probably my favorite aside from Guinness. I don't count that really as beer. That's more of a meal. This, what are we drinking now? Well, termites, it's summertime. So how about a nice little beer? How about a refreshing Anheuser-Busch product? And more importantly, a Bud Light with what? My St. Louis Blues. It says 2019 champ. Wasn't 2019 a good year? Don't you all feel bad for shitting on 2019 now that you're living through 2020? Who needs an apology? 2019. That's who needs an apology. And I think we might win again because they're going to do some bullshit round robin tournament. And I bet we can win that. So then we'll be Stanley Cup champions twice in my lifetime. Um, okay, we left off with Tanya. Now it's get, she's with Glenn, and it's getting good. It's getting real good. Glenn was playing the, 19, Glenn was playing the 1981 New Year's show at the Sheraton Waikiki. What? How come I never got that gig? I wonder if it's still there. The Sher I know it is. I'm going to call and see if they have any openings. I never get, I'm never anywhere awesome on New Year's Eve. Uh, this was a show he flew everyone to when I came up with the big idea that everyone should be together in Hawaii for New Year's. I got along with Glenn's family. Right when, when we first started dating, he took me to Arkansas to visit them. Right at first, they seemed a little nervous around me, and I don't know if it was because I was a singer or 20 years younger or because I was one of the trail of women he brought home. It didn't take long for them to warm up, though, and within days we were fishing together and singing around the house. I haven't cleaned out the icebox. Okay, I like that she said icebox, because I think I just, just started using fridge probably 10 years ago. I always said icebox, and I, was, I got made fun of a lot for it. We didn't really call it an icebox. Yeah, I did. Uh, I haven't cleaned out the icebox and made fried okra and, and Polk, polk salad, P-O-L-K, polk salad for them. So when we talked about this trip to Hawaii, I really wanted to include both families. This sounds like it could be an accident. This might not be the greatest experience because I think Bo Tucker is a little territorial. Off we went with our parents, his brother and sister, and his nephew, Beverly Hills. That's her best friend, not the city. Beverly Hills went with us, too. By that time, she'd left Tree Publishing and was working for Glenn's Publishing Company. Glinton. G-L-E-N-T-A-N. Glinton. Strange. Even though it had my name on it, I wasn't a partin partner. A pal of Glenn's was promoting the show. A guy I didn't like at all. He was Mr. Hollywood, Hawaiian style, and very oily. I don't even know what that means. His hair? What does that mean he's very oily? He was, one, he was the one who started the trouble. Here we go. What did I tell you? This won't be good. It started the trouble. There's nothing better than when a good old hillbilly goes, and that's when trouble started. Beverly Hills was trying to seat some people down front at the show, close to where the two families were sitting, and this promoter came up and jumped all over her. He said she shouldn't be seating people, and that she should just go sit the hell down. Well, Beverly protested because part of her job with Glenn was to see to it that his friends got good seats. So right there in front of the people she knew, including my family, the guy called her a bitch. What? What? I was backstage with Glenn at the time and didn't hear about it till after the show. When we got back to the suite, Beverly wasn't there, so I called her room to see what was going on. She was so upset, to say the least. I said, well... We'll just tell Glenn, and he'll tell that guy to go to hell. Glenn will be furious about this. Wrong! When I told Glenn he was so ripped, he couldn't have cared less. I was ripped, too, so I didn't let it pass. I told him, wow, they're both drunk, and now there's going to be a fight. Love it. I told him Beverly was embarrassed and hurt, and this guy didn't have the right to treat her like a dog. Then I insisted he call Beverly right on the spot and personally invite her to the suite. He told me to kiss off, and of course I couldn't let that pass, so I called him an asshole. Absolutely. Way to stand up for yourself. We fought our way off into the bathroom, which was about the size of the house I was living in, and continued the argument. Glenn got so mad, he pulled his belt off and said he was going to spank me. I yelled out, well, let's just see you do it. 
That's some good hillbilly responded. Really? Just go ahead and hit me. I was buzzed, and as it says in Travis Tritt's song, when I drink or do drugs, I always think I'm 10 feet tall and bulletproof. I agree, because I'm only five foot one, and if I get too much vodka in me, pfft. yeah, I'm UFC, but in my mind, I'm Conor McGregor, I'm like a crazy psycho leprechaun. So I'd be his height, which isn't that tall anyway. So I don't really guess, I'd think, I don't think I'm that tall, I just think I'm scrappy. Right about then, Glenn's nephew walked on and leaned up against the wall and watched. In another second, my dad stopped in, stomped in. I told you, Bo Tucker is going to get involved. My dad's face turned beet red when he saw Glenn holding me by the arm with a belt raised over me and he demanded to know what's going on. Then Glenn's nephew said an, an incredibly dumb thing to say to dad. Oh, it's nothing. Glenn's just going to spank Tanya. So that's how his family rolls. Well... You mouth off and it's time to get a spanking. I don't care how old you are. If you mouth off to Glenn, he will hit you with a belt. <laughs> those are the rules. We went over those at Thanksgiving. I don't know where, where you forgot. <sighs> Dad grabbed the belt out of Glenn's hand and got up in his face. Nobody spanks my little girl but me. So they're hitting them too. They're hitting also. Hitting, not good. Use words. Let's use words. Let's use words. Hmm? And you better get that straight. Glenn turned. I thought you were a man, Bo. A grown-up man. I flipped out at that and jumped Glenn. Now she's going to beat up on Glenn. I love it. What a night. I wish there had been an Instagram back then. Uh, <laughs> I flipped out and jumped on Glenn. My dad pulled me off and tried to get me to settle down. Glenn's remark was such an odd thing to say to a father who was stopping you from beating his daughter. Well, I think it's odd that your father says he's the only one who can beat you. It's Glenn, not good. Dad, a little weirder. But that's how Glenn thought. All of a sudden, the bathroom started filling up with people. Glenn's family, my mother, everybody was yelling at Dad and Mother were pulling me out the door. New Year's Eve was turning into a family fair, all right. And it wasn't the Brady Bunch go to Hawaii. I don't know who wrote this, but I like it. It sounds, maybe she said, told it like this. She's very funny if she did. I mean, funny after you're not getting hit. Not while you're getting hit. I went back to my parents' room with them. The phone rang immediately. It was Glenn, who started shouting at my dad. So it's still going to go on from hotel room. We're just going to call you now and yell at you. Dad told me he was going to come back down to the suite and kill him. Oh, that would end it, wouldn't it? I somehow got Dad calmed down, mainly because I knew that he would really hurt Glenn. Glenn wasn't a fighter unless he was fighting with a woman. Dad sat there on the bed with tears in his eyes. Tanya, I'm so afraid for you. I think he's going to kill you someday. I went over and sat down and put my arm around him. No, he isn't going to kill me. Glenn loves me. <sighs> I've thought a lot about why I put up with getting hit, and I don't know that I can explain it. Fair enough. Our fights usually started out as a mutual thing. We were both hot-tempered. Maybe it's like people who don't know they've been shot or stabbed because their adrenaline's so pumped. Hmm. Cocaine also dulls both your physical senses and your good sense. Perhaps I'm not a coke person. Our other problems besides cocaine was Jen's, Glenn's jealousy around Easter of 1981. Okay, now see, where this story didn't end. And I, don't, I guess that's how it ended. We just decided that, you know, your adrenaline's pumped and coke dulls a lot of things and daddy needs to stay out of their room, I guess. Uh, around Easter 1981, the Merle Haggard road trip surfaced and all hell broke loose. Oh no, all hell has been breaking loose. This is just another level of it. I convinced Glenn to let me organize a yard sale at his house. <laughs> They're like millionaires at this point. He has private jets picking her up. He's headlining Vegas. You've, you have, uh, you're, and they are, they're having yard sales. Wow. I said, Glenn, you just can't throw all, oh wait. He wanted to clean his place out, throw a bunch of stuff away. He even wanted to get rid of a pile of his stage costumes. I said, Glenn, you just can't throw that in the trash. What a waste. So I hauled it all out, put price tags on things, and when he was out playing a show one, in Tahoe one weekend, I had the sale. That is excellent. You yard sales somebody's shit while they're gone? <laughs> Fantastic. Beverly Hills were out in the front yard trying to push stage costumes off on anyone who stopped by. When I heard the phone ring, I went in and answered it. It was Glenn, and he was livid. Merle Hager is sitting right here in this dressing room. He says you jumped in bed with him like a trained monkey. 
I said, well, you boys hold the phone. I'll be right there. I left Beverly in charge of the garage sale. Now it's a garage sale. Same thing. Which only made $750, by the way. I got on a plane to Reno, then rented a car and drove to Tahoe. Merle wasn't around when I got there. And Glenn and I immediately started to argue. There was grinding equipment and cocaine all over Glenn's dressing room, and I started in on it, too. Once again, we both got trashed, and I ended up getting the worst of the fight. Oh, my God. More happens to her in a day than it has happened to me in a, a, a hundred years. I was bruised and mad, but drugs will do strange things to you, so I didn't leave. Why? Just stay there. You only made 750 bucks at the yard sale. No reason to go back for that chump change. Not when you're renting private jets to get to your next fight. Willie Nelson was playing in town that night, too, and we went to the show. Merle was there, too. Afterwards, I went over to Merle and asked him if he had called me a trained monkey, and if so, why? Merle put his arm around me and shook his head. You know I love you, Tanya. It wasn't much of an answer. Okay. I think we have to stop there because a lot went on. A lot went on, termites. Have you noticed my earrings? My niece made these. My niece, Claire. I think of them as termite wings. They're wings of some sort. Sort of looks like the Detroit Red Wings. She has a kit that she got on Amazon for $27. And then I thought, well, this can't be real. It can't be real silver or my ears will get infected. It's real. I may get a set myself. <sighs> what else? My friend Lewis is here. He might be a guest reader. Because uh, I'm not tired of reading to you guys. But, you know, switch it up a little bit. Give somebody else a chapter. Somebody who doesn't have the twang. He could just read it and yell, yell, yell about it. Um, he turned me on to Acorn TV. You should go watch a show called Loch Ness. It's like Broad Church, Little Murder in a Scottish town. In, in the town of Loch Ness, there actually is a town called Loch Ness. It's not about the monster, although I think they could have thrown that in for fun. They didn't. Not sorry, not yet. And that's it. I hope you guys are comfortable in your pajamas, under your sheets, light summer sheets, I hope. It's getting hot out there. I'm still going to keep the fireplace on, though, just for the ambiance. So what are you going to say to yourself tonight? I'm a good termite. I'm a worthy termite. I'm a patient termite. I'm an educated termite. I'm going to be a well-behaved termite. And everything's going to be okay. We're all going to be okay. And so how do we sign off to one another? Night-night termites. <laughs>